employment compensation discipline performance or dismissal of specific employees of the public body the purchase or lease of real property for use of the public body and discussion of collective negotiating matters between the board and its representatives of its employees. No action was taken during closed executive session. I would now ask everyone to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> For our listening audience, because of the COVID-19 crisis and the governor's disaster declarations, this meeting is not fully open. A fully in-person meeting is not practical or prudent because of COVID-19. Do we have a recommendation for tonight's agenda? Yes, we do. I recommend the board approve tonight's April 12, 2022 open session board meeting agenda as presented. Can I have a motion? So moved. A second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. We will now move to our district student highlights. I'd like to call Marquise, Wilson, or Marquise Stewart, sorry, Director of P12 Teaching and Learning to the podium to recognize the students from the writing contest. Good evening, Board of Education, Superintendent Clark. I uh, would like to take this opportunity to commend a group of students. Uh, we had a writing contest back in February, a black history writing contest. I know it's April, but we still want to uh, celebrate this group of students. Uh, so I would like to call them up front, and I'll just give you a brief uh, overview once they get up here to tell you what they wrote about and what they have coming to them. So I'd like to start with Eva Flores, and if I pronounce your name wrong, I apologize. Eva Flores, Ashton Heger, Juliet Yarbrough, Daniel Flores, Michaela Johnson, Clara Peters, Tessa Benedict, Layana Hamdom, Travis Hargis, Gavin Sunderland, Jeterius Green, Matthew Tibbs, and Diane Hernandez Bruno. So these students had an opportunity to write an essay back in February. And the essay, one of the titles for our middle school students was uh, the, the, folk, the Achievements of Black Citizens Locally. And for our high school students, the topic was the role of civil disobedience in our history and that of our future. And so these students, uh, one, we had about 13 students who won this contest. So these students uh, on May 13th will be traveling to Chicago, Illinois, uh, to go to the Disabled African American History Museum, also the South Side Center for the Arts, and get to go eat some wonderful pizza, pizza at Giordano's. So we want to just commend you all. Uh, for your hard work. They also are celebrities in the community. They got a chance to be on the Brian Byers show uh, to kind of talk about their essays a few weeks ago. So again, we are very happy for you. I uh, just want to give everyone, please give them a round of applause. <laughs> All right. Thank you so very much. Y'all may be seated. Can I get a picture? Sure. Congratulations to you all, and you're going to love Giordano's. It was my favorite in Chicago. I don't think your mom wants me in the picture. Giordano sounds better than dinner. <laughs> <coughs> we will now move on to our public participation. The Board of Education would like to note the following during public participation. Identify oneself and be brief. Any public comments received will be read during this time. Comments should be limited to three minutes. For our listening audience, please note that during the Board of Education meetings and public participation, Board members do not respond and or comment to public comments. All comments are referred to administration. Furthermore, the board refrains from referring to specific students or staff members by name 
and request that public commenters refrain from doing so as well. The request that you omit names is made to protect you from allegations of libel or slander or from violations of the Illinois School Student Records Act. It is not intended to shield an employee from criticism. Ms. Bradford, do we have anyone wishing to speak to the board this evening or do we have comments to be read? Um, no one wishing to speak, but a couple comments to be read. Okay. And bear with me, I forgot my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Hope I can see out of these. Okay. Oh, it's better. <laughs> okay. You ready, Brylin? Okay. Uh, Jacob Jenkins. Um, I heard the young lady from Johns Hill School that complained about the principal ratings. Interesting because I researched the teacher ratings in DPS and 99% are proficient or distinguished. The two highest ratings for teachers. How can a district with all high quality teachers, according to evaluation records, have such low performance? I would say the principal ratings reference matched the district performance unlike the teacher ratings. This is once again a case of mediocre staff defending mediocre staff while our students at students' education and lives suffer. Also, the young lady from Johns Hill mentioned it was the fault of the superintendent. Is it a coincidence that she said that a, about a black superintendent who has been on the job a month, but no one has said anything about the poor performance under the leadership of the past white superintendents? The board packet said there will be a seven mindset presentation, but until the racist discriminatory mindsets change in the district, we will continue to experience the mediocre cycle of education in DPS. Next, next one. Dear school board members, I am very concerned about our district. We are losing staff and administrators at an alarming rate. While some of it is a national issue, much of it is a DPS issue. We are not able to hire teachers, nor are we able to retain them. I went through the board packets from 2017 to present and tallied the data in the personnel action items. In the 17-18 school year, DPS hired 99 new teachers and had 69 teachers resi resign. In 18-19 school year, 117 teachers were hired with 46 resignations. During 19-20 school year, 69 teachers were hired and 89 teachers resigned. This left a 20-teacher deficit that we are still struggling to overcome. In the 2020-21 school year, 90 teachers were hired with 62 resignations. In the 2021-22 school year so far, 41 teachers have been hired with 57 resignations. Once again, we are in the negative 16 teachers. This school year was carried by the retired teachers. Many of them have reached their maximum days, so we continue to struggle to have substitutes. Many staff have come to the podium begging the school board to hear their concerns. I would like them to know that I and others in the community hear and support them. Unfortunately, they do not feel they are being heard from the board or the college administration, so many of them are leaving. Possible suggestions to help DPS teachers or at least fight, give them hope. Look at the testing we require the students to take. Maybe take a pause to catch up. Offer retention incentives or bonuses. Most importantly, allow our teachers to teach and be treated as the professionals they are. Administrators are also leaving at an alarming rate. When looking at the personnel action since the 17-18 school year, 15 new administrators were hired and 26 administrators have resigned, including five administrators this school year. Possible suggestions to help DPS principals or at least give them hope? Give grace. <coughs> Recognize that there has been constant change for the past five years and the building staff are still adapting. Support them when they, are, when they ask for help. Don't just be punitive. Allow our principals to run their buildings. They were hired for their leadership skills. Let them lead. I am coming to you begging you to please address the issue before DPS is beyond redemption. We were great once and we can be again. What made us great was that we were a family and a team. Now it is a toxic and adversarial environment. No one knows who to talk to or who they can trust. I believe that is imperative that the board hear the pleas of the staff and give them hope that things will get better in DPS. Melanie Ishmael. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Clark. Thank you, Melissa. We will move on to the student ambassador's report. Any reports this evening? Um, not much new to uh, report in the schools. We are uh, wrapping up the school year. We are studying for our final exams in the high schools and middle schoolers and elementary schoolers are finishing up their final units uh, in their studies from what I hear. Uh, MacArthur 
and I believe Eisenhower as well are going to have one final band and orchestra concert, if I'm not mistaken. For MacArthur, I think the date is May 5th, but um, yeah, I believe it's May 5th. And um, yeah, that's what all that's happening. I'll also give a shout out to my band director, uh, Mr. Green. He's getting married this weekend, so <laughs> wish him well. <laughs> You know, condolences or congratulations, whatever you think. <laughs> you don't get to say that until you're married, man. <laughs> you got to earn it. Uh, well, I look married. I, I wear a suit. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, congratulations to him and happy Easter to all those who celebrate that. We're celebrating that this weekend, so it's a nice long weekend. The weather is getting nicer, and, yeah, that's about all I have. Thank so, you. So, Daniel, did, did Mr. Green ask you guys to play at his wedding? Uh, no. I <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. I always love the reports. We will move on to board discussion. Is there anything the board wants to discuss at this time? Um, I do have a question. I mean, you mentioned uh, Mr. Green. So, um, previously when Todd was here, we talked about uh, the fundraiser for their band uniforms. Mm -hmm. I don't know if... I mean, this is like, is anybody here that, yeah, uh, just want to, he mentioned that, uh, Todd mentioned that the district would match what the school raised to help pay for the uh, uniforms. Just want to make sure that that was still a uh, standing offer. And Have they done their fundraising? They are really close. Okay. I mean, within, I mean, I, I think they were. I could be wrong on the numbers. I think they're within just a few, maybe 5% of their goal. So. Yeah, I remember the conversation. Yeah. So when they get finished, let us know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Um, there was an article in the news this week that said the Illinois State Board of Education is considering proposing, or maybe they already are proposing, that standardized testing be increased in every school district and going down grade levels as low as kindergarten. And as I've previously stated, I'm not very much in favor of that personally. Um, but I'm really just bringing this up in terms of um, how we interact with the state board, association of school boards, other school districts to lobby if we do have an opinion. And I'm not saying we do, but if we did have an opinion of governing that, how we would handle that in terms of approaching um, the legislature. Well, so that information hasn't reached my desk yet, so that's something that I will be looking for. Okay. And, of course, um, I will be working with TNL to discover what we would like to do moving forward. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I don't know if we've ever really worked with the State Board of, um, the State Association of School Boards to, you know, as they're a lobby group also. And at some point I, I think we should think about how we would do that. So it's just something I wanted to bring up in general. That's not a problem. There's nothing wrong with, you know, taking a stance and letting them know, you know, what we are seeing here in our district and how what they are proposing could affect us and right. probably other districts similar to ours. Right. Thank you. What's up, Ryan? So, L, um, which is the Administrators Association, IESB, which is the School Board Association, and IPA all have lobbying wings, and at one time they were called the Alliance. I don't know whether they... but. The, they is a regular on a regular basis with multiple staff members um, approach the legislature with school interest issues and so I, you know you can reach out to the governmental relations department at the school board association and they'll tell you their position on this stuff okay. but I, I i said this once before that testing mandate is coming from on high it's what's happening is that that is a a federal mandate. Uh, that, <laughs> that's a, it's, I had no idea what was going on. I was going to sign language back, though. Uh, <laughs> it's a federal mandate, and they're just the conduit telling you what it is that the feds are telling them. So, Thank you for the contact information. All right. Anything else? I just want to add really fast that I had the pleasure of watching the um, Kyle Raw Apples <laughs> play um, American Dreamer, and I had the pleasure of watching the Kyle Raw Apples briefly play Eisenhower. I had <laughs> some child commitments I could not, so I couldn't stay. Unfortunately, I missed the third game. However, my point is, it was the most enjoyable 
game I have ever seen in my life. Yes. So to our new athletic director, I think you need to start recruiting some of our administration um, for some sporting events. It's, but in all seriousness, it was a very good experience. If uh, there's another one coming up, I think tomorrow. Tomorrow we play Richland. So, and you play. Where is that one at? Eisenhower. At Eisenhower. If y'all get a chance, really, I th- you should go. Um, the interaction between administration and the students was phenomenal. Parents were there supporting their kids. Parents were there, and they got to see, you know, Dr. Clark, for example, in a different light. Jeff Days in a different light. Jeff, you got moves. You got skills. <laughs> my point. My my point of this is, I know there's a perception in the community that we are out of touch and that you know we are up here or whatever but those games dispelled all of that so if we can do stuff like that in the future um you know like different sporting events i'll be happy to do some stuff i can't do basketball i'm too short um but you know my hats off to whoever organized this it was it was great it was a very good experience I mean, I heard students talking about it. I heard other parents talking about it. It was it was really good. So my my hats off to whomever, and please do it again. Thanks, what time Kevin. is the, what time's the game you. tomorrow? Five. Tomorrow it it was it's posted as five, but Richland asked for us to start at five thirty. So at Eisenhower. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Anything else? Oh, and I will say they need some more cheerleaders because Dr. Clark. <laughs> 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 I'm thinking like, you know, Denise or Maria, Marianne, Deanne, they all need some pom-poms, but I mean. Only women? Well, I only saw Dr. Clark with pom-poms. But anyway, oh, uh, uh, Jay Marino, you have you have skills too. I didn't see you. <laughs> Mar- Marquise, uh, I don't want to take away from anybody that was playing. Y'all are, you're great. Lawrence Tribble. Lawrence in the room too? Yeah. Okay. Where are the raw apples? Where are the raw apples? Okay. Stand up. <laughs> fact, everyone who pl- everyone who played, won't you just stand up real quick? Everyone Come on, stand raw up. Raw apples. Come on. Love it. All right. So much fun. <laughs> it really was. We're having a good time tonight. I'm trying to think if I can get Wyatt to go. We will now move on to reports from administration. I'd like to call Jeff Dace, Assistant Superintendent of P12 Teaching and Learning, to the podium to present any background and or introduce the presenter for the seven mindsets update. All right. Um, good evening, uh, Decatur Board of Education, Dr. Clark, Superintendent. Uh, this is a part of the series of just trying to be proactive and giving you all progress support about several of the partnerships that we have with the district. So tonight we will be having a presentation and question and answer session from our social emotional development, social emotional program and curriculum seven mindsets. So it gives me pleasure to introduce Remington Fairlam, Chief Officer of Seven Mindsets. Hello. Uh, thank you for having me. Again, Remington Fairlam, Dr. Clark, it's nice to meet you and nice to address all of you. Um, I've been with the company for a few years now and I uh, live here in Illinois. We're a national company, but I live just up the road a little bit to the, in the suburbs and drove down. And I'm glad to be here tonight. Um, I guess we'll just go right to the first slide. We've got a couple slides here to share. Oh, here we go. I got it. Great. Well, I may have gone. I may have gone past it. <laughs> Let's see if I can back it up. No, I guess that's it. All right. So uh, I know many of you who are in the school see these uh, seven mindsets prominently. I won't go through them all in detail, except just to say, you know, there's a there's a, a, a sequence here, right? We're helping students uh, from preschool all the way to twelfth grade to understand that uh, new ways to think. You know, fresh ways to think about themselves and who they are and the world that they live in. And so we, we start with everything as possible uh, and helping them to believe that the world is bigger than maybe what even they, they know and that there's uh, all kinds of opportunity for them if they open, open, open their eyes and we'll look for it. We help them to think about their passions. What is it? How are they made? And what is it they're wired to do? So we try to help them to discover their passions. And once they know that, we want to help them to realize there's lots of other people around them and that we're all connected to each other. And 
once we know that, we're accountable to ourselves and to each other. This actions and behaviors and decisions that we make are important. And so we help them there. Then we move on to making sure that they understand that once they, they see that we're all accountable uh, and that and we help each other, that we have an attitude of gratitude. And again, it's more than just uh, teaching young people to say thank you. That's a habit that's important and wonderful. But we're trying to teach young people how to think about things and have perspective so that gratitude just flows from them and they see things that they might not have seen otherwise. Uh, then we move on to live to give because we all have something to give. We help them to see what it is that they have to give and to contribute. And lastly, uh, the time is now. So uh, these, are, these are the seven mindsets. We've got uh, you know, learning objectives, a part of each of them. And I'll just say, you know, as, as I came in and looking at the strategic plan and mission, uh, you've got six bullets that are there. And I just want to make a quick connection back to these. Here's some words that we in our program, uh, they're, they're your words in your uh, uh, mission uh, statement, but they're concepts that we spend a lot of time on helping young people to think about. Confidence, passion, curiosity, discovery, adaptability and resilience, certainly relationships, and community connections. Um, so I, th I think, I hope you would agree, we're well aligned and we're, we're grateful to have the opportunity to support both your staff uh, and your students here. We, we spend a lot of time making sure that we work with the adults because we know that that's a really important element to all of it, being successful. Um, it's been an amazing partnership. These are just a few pictures that were taken uh, by our folks who have been here in the building uh, doing professional uh, learning with your, with your teachers. Uh, and what, what we see is that students are kind of awash in these remind, you know, reminders of, these, of the mindsets and the learning objectives, and it just helps cement uh, as we're all seeing them and thinking about them, uh, that these are just good things that we can be thinking about and doing it together. For the 2022-23 uh, school year, we're working on a number of new things that we, um, we actually have uh, taken a lot of our development directly from our customers. And uh, so on the right side, let me just start on the right side. This is a, a new dashboard for leaders uh, that we're building out uh, to just provide more data and more detail about what's happening uh, at all levels that we can report on in, in, the, in the district. On the left side, these are some of the things that we're, you know, we've built, we've spent a lot of time building this last year. Uh, focus on adult, adult social and emotional learning. Again, that, that's a program we're going to be calling Empowering Educators. Again, it's, we, we know that uh, our teachers are hurting too sometimes. And they, they have a lot of challenges in their lives and uh, the, the mindsets can be that, that powerful, but we, we go even deeper than that with the adult uh, SEL program. We've built more Spanish, so everything we have is in authentic Spanish, but we've built out a second year worth of, of coursework. We'll likely do that third year next year. Restorative practices for educators and for students is an area that um, we've been asked, please give us more there. And so we've spent time in that, and we've got a, a wonderful new program called Safe Circles, another one called Circle Talk for, uh, for the adults. And it's really meant to help, um, you know, kind of restore after there's been uh, something's, you know, hurt, hurt people or there's been a, a behavior that, you know, was unacceptable that we are able to bring people back into the fold and do it in a, in a way that uh, helps them understand that, again, we're all connected. The uh, fourth one there is a lesson builder. Uh, this is something that, um, again, we have some real power users, uh, teachers, who love to build their own lessons. And what we found is that the, the districts and the schools and classrooms where teachers are really taking this on themselves, they do some really amazing things. So we put some extra tools in there so that they can even build a more robust lessons if that's their passion. And in, with some of our uh, districts, you know, they've, they've got lots of teachers who are building and they're sharing across the district and it's uh, really making it their own. Lastly, Data Genius is a, uh, an assessment tool that we've created uh, because we know that um, it's important that we're able to measure, not just how, um, we're, how the progress that we're making across the year. That's certainly important. Um, and asking kids where they are around these mindsets, but also just on daily check-ins. You see in the lower right corner there, those are that's a screenshot from Data Genius as we can ask kids how they're doing as they come into school. Do they need to talk to somebody today? If they do, that's something that we can, we can make happen quickly through the system to alert an adult that a student needs to talk. 
that's really all I have. I, I'd be a, uh, happy to take any questions that you have for us at Seven Mindsets. Anything? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. <coughs> Next report, I'd like to call Joe Caputo, District Athletic Coordinator, to the podium to present a first read of the 2022-2023 athletic plan. We'll get you clean. Because <laughs> I know you need it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> You're right, you. Good evening, President Oak, school board members, Dr. Clark, Ms. Bradford, student ambassador. So tonight I'm here to give an update on the athletics plan for 22-23. First of all, this is a first read for the athletic guides. So there's an athletic guide for high school. There's an athletic slash parent guide for middle school. That top bar, what we're trying to show here is just how does this happen? So beginning in October, we reach out to the principals at the high school and middle school level, along with the ADs, and we ask for input. Here's your guide, what needs to change? So that goes from October through March. We have a final review with the assistant superintendent, superintendent, designee, whoever we need to from administration. And so what happens during the year, the input is kind of slow at the beginning. And then as ADs and principals have meetings, the input picks up. So you have both documents, and I'm just going to hit some Reader's Digest version key points here. So on the, on the left-hand side of the chart, with the high school, we, on page 20, we made sure that a student understands if you're going to participate in the game that day, you got to be in school. So we, we kind of firmed that up a little bit. And then on page 30, we made sure that our admissions fees and our gate officials are the same throughout the CS8. So if you go to a ball game in Rochester, you go to a ball game in Decatur, you know, it's the same admissions price. And then here, this is key. Um, what we've seen, especially at the high school level, is underage high school kids running all over MacArthur or Eisenhower. Kids drop them off, or excuse me, parents drop them off at the gate, and then they just run around unchaperoned. What we want to say from now on is you have to have a parent who chaperones the child throughout the ball game. That's from entry till the whistle blows. And then the last part is we make sure we reach out to HR to make sure that our game or that our game official rates match up with what's in the HR policy. Okay, going over to the right, middle school athletics, you know, the changes there aren't as robust as what's on the uh, high school side. So we do a lot of verification, make sure the ISA policies are still what they were two years ago, um, make sure that that coaches and players understand they're very strict about um, um, being a good role model, being a good coach, and if you break any of those rules, there is a penalty for that. So we go over that with coaches, and then um, we added wrestling. We, you know, that was a new sport to us, so we had to include the admission price. And then we're always concerned about concussions, so we reached out to make sure what was on the CDC was what was in our guide. And those, you know, was that everything? No, but those are the main bullet points. All right, next slide. Five-year uniform rotation, again, going to the left. So we have approval to co-op in, in those nine sports that you see in front of you, all the way from cross country to bass fishing. So instead of having MacArthur uniforms and Eisenhower uniforms, it's gonna be a uniform, co-op uniform that's gonna say Decatur. You know, Decatur cross country, Decatur bass fishing, whatever it is, the total cost of that is just under 13000 Then if you go to the right, um, what is up for the middle school sports this year is they were able to purchase for 22-23 track and field uniforms. We talked to the middle school ADs and they said, you know what, we have plenty of track and field uniforms. What we need are warm-ups because when our kids go to the outdoor meets, in the springtime, just like last week, they're freezing. We don't, we don't have warm-ups like the other schools. So what they would like to do is, instead of getting track uniforms, can we have warm-ups? And so six middle schools, 40 warm-ups per school, 
you know, just under 20,000, 19,626. And then the bottom one, elementary school athletics, we wear t-shirts when we play at the disc or we run it at Stephen Decatur, it's t-shirt and any pair of shorts that you can grab. So what we would like to do is add elementary t-shirts to the rotation so every three years you get new volleyball t-shirts every three years you get new uh, basketball t-shirts so this year coming up would be um, basketball so it would roughly be we have 10 schools 60 shirts per school 30 shirts per gender so a total of uh, 6630 and so the total district cost for this increase in our uniform rotation would be 39233. All right, next slide. Track and field equipment. So out of Stephen Decatur, and I know Dr. Collins is out there because his daughter plays softball, so you see the new track that's going in, right? So that track is to be shared by all the middle schools. It may be at Stephen Decatur, bless you. But if some, you know, if Johns Hill or Hope or anybody wants to go run track, head out to Stephen Decatur and run on the brand new track. What we found was this is an awesome track. It's being finished up, but then we started looking at our equipment. I mean, those hurdles had to be there since Stephen Decatur was first built. <laughs> so a lot of unsafe, broken equipment. So what we did, we had, we had a bid. We had two bidders, for lack of better words. BSN was awarded the bid at $36,000. Um, the cost of, yeah, the cost of the equipment is $36,000. And then, by the grace of God, we reached out. And we had an anonymous donor who said, we'll give you $35,000 for the, for the track equipment. So the district cost for the track equipment is only going to be $1,000. Thank you to this very generous, anonymous donation so that's a good story okay so I'm on the last slide um, high school athletic policy zero dollars that's not going to cost the district anything uniform rotation uh, due to the new ads such as the co-op and and um, the warm-ups and everything just under 40 so 39 2 3 3 Stephen Decatur tracks 36 you total all that up you're at 75 K minus the anonymous donation which is 35 so the total funding request for 2223 is right at 4233 and that's all i have i just had one question about the track um it only had six lanes instead of eight is yep. there a reason why they only chose six yeah and and really dr collins it, it came down to a matter of cost i mean um the total package for the Stephen Decatur track was 480, and had we we had room, I mean the architect looked at it. They could have got the additional two lanes in there, but it wouldn't have been a million, but it would have been a couple hundred thousand more. So we just went with what was there, and it was better than what we had, and that's why we just. No, I agree. That. I was just yeah. curious. I know because yeah. it's it wasn't. Per scale or whatever so yeah the other question I had real quick is the um, on the high school edition about the chaperone of all students or whatever yes is there a way that that can be enforced and is that going to be more like security type thing and, and well it's that's a really good question because I'm trying to you know we could when they come up to the gate and you know you see a little kid that's by themselves you could say okay well where is somebody's got to pay for you to get in don't but once they get through that gate, to your point, and they're running around, oh my God, we'd have to have a whole bunch of security people out there. So um, I really don't have a good answer for how we're going to chaperone that, other than when you spot the child that's by themselves, you know, escort them out, which would not be that'd be kind of awkward. So okay. I'm sure there are ways we can. Yeah, I just don't have a good answer, but I'll, but I'll follow up. I'll ask, no I'll talk with the ADs and we'll come up with a plan. Right. Okay. Okie doke. And then just real quick, I just want to give you a shout out on your, all your emails that you send trying <laughs> to organize all these sports with all these different schools and you know, the grade schools merging into Stephen Decatur and all the feeder schools. That's, I mean, I know that's a lot of work. Well, thank you very so, much. I mean, it's I, hard I, for me to keep up, and I only have the one kid doing it. So, <laughs> I job. really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.
Thank All you. right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Joe. You bet. All right. Next report, I'd like to call Lawrence Trimble, Director of Student Services, to the podium to present a high school uniform update. <laughs> <coughs> Alrighty. Well, good afternoon to the Board of Education. Superintendent Clark um, gives me great honor to <laughs> present the uh, uniform policy update recommendations. Just want to start off this presentation, <clears throat> excuse me, um, letting the board know that um, you know the the examination of our uniform policy is in alignment with our strategic plan. Uh, strategy two, which focuses on uh, essentially engaging the students in our learning environment. And so uh, you'll see later that we um, got some student feedback um, as well as teacher feedback, parent feedback regarding um, these updates that we're going to present to you today. Um, but we wanted to just highlight that everything that we're doing um, in regards to this is in alignment with our strategic plan. So um, just to kind of give an overview of typical pros and cons about school uniforms, uh, some of the pros are it develops a standard for dress for uh, re real life expectations, reduces bullying and peer pressure, uh, makes getting ready for school easier, keeps the focus on school and not your dress, uh, better prices and easier to locate. Some of those typical uh, cons are uh, promotes conformity instead of individuality. Um, it doesn't necessarily stop overall bullying, doesn't improve attendance or academic performance. Um, uniforms can um, lack a provision in terms of uh, choice. Um, and then sometimes it can provide, it can be an extra expense for families to get those. Kind of wanted to give you guys a snapshot of the uh, dress code data. If you, if you look at this closely, you'll see from the first implementation of the uniforms, we had a lot of dress code violations. So essentially staff were spending a lot of time uh, pretty much going through a power struggle, if you will, uh, with student uniforms. Over time, uh, that has um, decreased significantly, um, whereas last year we didn't include 2021 because that was the year we were out for the uh, pandemic. But um, this year, excuse me, um, we have, we've had 15 uh, uniform dress code violations. So we surveyed our teachers and um, we asked them the question if, if they thought that we should continue the school uniform dress code policy and we had 77 responses which is about 15% of our staff uh, and out of those individuals who responded 69% of them said no. Uh, some of the pros and cons that they gave to us um, and I'm not going to read all of these of course but some of the pros is they felt that the dress code keeps everybody on a level playing field, helps to keep peace and in, in, uh, order in the environment. Some of the cons that they expressed was that the uh, dress code has become difficult to enforce um, and we don't have a lot of data pretty much to say how much the dress code policy has actually helped us um, uh, academically, whereas <coughs> uh, helping the students achieve at a higher level. Student voice, uh, we, we got our student voice from uh, conversations with the uh, Superintendent Youth Advisory Council as well as our student ambassadors. And they also presented some feedback to us uh, relative to the uniform policy. So some of the pros that they expressed was that the uniforms promote spirit wear. Uh, it is easier to identify students in the uh, school. It is, um, it is easier whereby stud everyone is, is the same and there's some similarity between both high schools. Some of the cons that they presented were um, kids are still missing class and learning uh, when there are uniform violations. People not adhering to the dress code, again, going back to some of the uh, issues that we had when it first was rolled out. Uh, polo shirts are hard to find, so we have had some issues with our vendors not having um, uh, having the, the inventory for uniforms. Um, so that has presented an issue for our families. Uh, some of the suggested changes that our students uh, had given us, and this is a, a wide range, but some of them expressed that uh, if we're going to keep the uniform policy, we should get stricter um, and sp specify what's allowed and what isn't allowed, or just simply get rid of it. Um, other students said, 
add blue jeans and relax the dress code in general. And um, some others express having a dress code but getting rid of the uniform. We surveyed our parents, 164 re responses. We asked them the same question about continuing the uniform policy. 77% of our parent population said no. So um, as we are moving forward to essentially finalize a decision, we have, uh, we're making the recommendation that for this month of May, uh, we, we pilot um, a uniform free month. So the last, the last month of um, school, we pilot a uniform free month, which essentially what we'll do is we'll eliminate the uniform, but there still is criteria as it relates to a dress code um, so students just can't come to school wearing whatever they want to wear, but uh, they will still adhere to the dress code, but just not wear the have to wear the school uniform. <coughs> and after uh, this month is completed, we'll gather some feedback from um, from our administrators and from our students, and then um, make a determination on the next steps for the next school year. Okay. Question. Yes. Have we looked at updating the dress code? I don't think that's been updated in. Yeah. So if we if, as we are considering um, shifting, however, which way we go with the uniform, we will have to get a little more specific with the dress code. Um, you know, there are many different examples, but of course, we will have to address things like ripped jeans or uh, logos on shirts that have inappropriate types of um, uh, materials on it and different things like that. So. Um, the alternative would be to update the dress code if we eliminated the uniform policy or whichever way we went. Um, but yes, we will have to, and we're we're actually going over the code of conduct now. And so um, next week, I'll be back to present some of the um, uh, recommended changes to the um, dress code as well. You're really going to have to inform the kids about this because there's really no student attending DPS that's ever had to worry about the dress code, right? Uh, yes, all students have to worry about dress code. But, I mean, so, they're using uniforms. None of them have ever had to adhere to the dress code because they've all been the ones in high school have been wearing uniforms. Right. Yeah. So, just because we have a uniform doesn't mean that we don't have a dress code. So, so students are accustomed to appropriate school attire because if a kid comes, say for instance in the middle school, if a kid comes to school uh, with, you know, too low cut of a shirt, that administrator does have a conversation with. Um, whomever the student might be or if they uh, have certain attire that could be considered a disruption to the learning environment such as um, a shirt that says you know and I'm just I'm just randomly saying this I, I'm not promoting drugs in school or anything like that but if they brought it wore a shirt that had a lot a bunch of marijuana uh, paraphernalia on it then that would be considered a disruption to the learning environment so there are elements of a dress code indicator public schools but to your point the high schools have always had a uniform, so we will have to. We do have. Um, we'll have a communication that's going out to families um, about the month of May um, to let them know that you know there are still going to be some items that are going to be restricted for their wear um, as okay, we pilot this. That's what I was going to ask if we're relaxing and make sure we're commuting, communicating how far we're relaxing it. You know? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, inevitably, you're going to, you're going to see increases in infractions because these kids are not not sure where the line is at. <laughs> well, so right, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. You're, you're 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 introducing latitude into the process this way versus this way. Correct. Which is not which is far wider than what it currently <laughs> is. So you're going to have to have more infractions. Yeah. To be fair, it's in the handbook, and the students yeah. are expected to read it because they have to sign that they read it. So I mean, and. I and know, I'm I've never saying. read it. Yeah. <laughs> right, but it is. But to to Doctor, you're saying is that you're, you're going to have to deal with this in the month of May more than you're dealing with it now. Right. Well, mm -hmm. we are dealing with it now, so we do give students the opportunity to change into appropriate clothing before it becomes a, you know, extreme um, infraction type of type of offense. So uh, we may have a student who you know is waiting on a parent to bring some some clothing for them clothing items and that happens district-wide already so it's not um, you know it's not totally away from our processes and procedure um, but to your point we will we will have to deal with some uh, nuances which we're dealing with all with already right so there are some elements of our uniform policy where uh, we do have students who are coming to school out of uniform 
and administrators are making a decision to address it um, or, and quite honestly, let it go. And so we have to we have to deal with all of those pieces, which I mean, some of the some of that data already came out. So I'm not saying anything new. Um, so, you know, so we will have some issues that we deal with, but um, we'll address it as we go. We'll collect that data and then we'll present to you all, um, you know, but we don't want to make it a power struggle where we're, you know, getting into gross defiant type of situations where, you know, it's 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 becoming. Um, argumentative type of situation between a student and a, and a staff member. And I would just like to add, um, we want to support the administrators at the high school. They know um, that this was coming up because they were part of this survey. But at the same time, if we are seeing that the kids, if kids cannot self-regulate, when we come back to the table, then we will be saying they're not ready for this right now. Because we don't want to have an undue burden on administrators either or the, or the teaching staff. Anything else? And when you said that you'd be surveying people at the end of the pilot, um, just want to make sure you're. In, you said administrators and students. You mean all staff as well? Yeah, okay. the same the same uh, stakeholders that we okay. um, survey for this part okay. of it. Thanks. I have a question, though. I don't know if it's more appropriate for this conversation or if it's for when you come back about <laughs> dress code. But I'm curious, just you know, in in the legal field, there's been a lot of discussion about gender, gender neutral dress codes, like in a courthouse setting and that sort of thing. And I'm curious, as we're looking at this again, you know, um, for our students, is that a part of the conversation? Is there gender neutral dress codes now that schools are applying to Yeah, students? so that was actually a part of some of the feedback. I just didn't read it, so okay. that will be added to the conversation because it was, it was a part of the feedback that um, I, I believe some of our teachers added to the conversation. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Else? Thanks, Lawrence. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm Thanks, Lawrence. Just real quick, I wanted, wanted to say I'm in favor of getting rid of the, dre the dress, or sorry, the Uniforms. uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the communication, you know, make sure everybody's on board with, or, or knows what to be on board with. So, and I'm sure you know that. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Lawrence. Thanks, Lawrence. Thanks, Lawrence. Thank you. That will end our report <coughs> from administration. Okay, we will now move on to roll call action items. Do we have a recommendation for the personnel action items? Yes, I recommend the board approve the personnel action items listed in the memo from Jason Hood, Director of Human Resources, as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Oaks? Aye. Ms. Banks? Aye. Dr. Collins Brown? Aye. Mr. Taylor? Aye. Mr. Scheider? Aye. And Mr. Dion? Aye. Seven aye, zero nay. Motion carried. Do we have a recommendation for the Aramark point of sale upgrade? Yes, I recommend the board approve the Aramark point of sale POS upgrade as presented. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? I could I ask a little bit more about what this is? Thank you. I <laughs> wasn't quite clear on that myself. Who we got? Um, thank you, Jay. <laughs> Uh, the hardware upgrade is in order to, uh, like anything, it gets outdated and we're having some issues. Um, this is part of a, a typical rotation cycle and this happens to be the year the district is responsible for purchasing uh, the point of sale and the hardware for food services. So um, that's what the action is before you this evening. So it's a technology. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So it doesn't have to do anything to do with Aramark so much. It's just I'm sorry. doesn't have anything to do with Aramark so much than just no. Other than they're the users of it. Oh, okay. The, the, right. the point. Okay. It, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Is this Jay? Let me clarify a little bit. This is used to keep track of the number of meals. As yeah. This would be line. as students are coming through the line. Uh, it's oh. it's the okay. hardware. This is how we track federal funding. This is how right? we track all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we get money for every meal served right mm -hmm. from the federal yeah. government yeah right and then all of that uh, is connected to the NutriKid server which we upload in uh, communicate with skyward as well so okay is it um vendor agnostic will it work with other vendors other i would have to look into that i'm not sure but most of what we do is compatible okay. forward and backward I, I figured, yep. but, yeah yep. okay. any other questions thank you yep all righty 
Can I have a motion? We have a motion and it's second on the floor. Roll call vote. <laughs> Mr. Dion. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Taylor. Aye. Mr. Scheider. Aye. Ms. Banks. Mr. Oaks. Aye. And Dr. Collins Brown. Aye. Seven aye, zero nay. Motion carried. Do we have a recommendation for the HSHS St. Mary's Hospital Athletic Trainer Services Amendment? Yes, I recommend the board approve the HSHS St. Mary's Hospital Athletic Trainer Services Amendment as presented. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Scheider? Aye. Mr. Oaks? Aye. Dr. Collins Brown? Aye. Mr. Dion? Abstain. Ms. Banks? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. And Mr. Taylor? Aye. Six aye, one abstain. Motion carried. Do we have a recommendation to increase existing blanket purchase order amounts for Menards and Springfield Electric? Yes, I recommend the board approve to increase existing blanket purchase order amounts for Menards and Springfield Electric as presented. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Taylor? Aye. Dr. Collins Brown? Aye. Mr. Dion? Aye. Mr. Scheider? Aye. Ms. Banks? Mr. Oates aye. and Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Seven aye, zero nay. Motion carried. Do we have a recommendation for the Toro Sand Pro 5040 for athletic field maintenance? Yes, I recommend the board approve the Toro Sand Pro 5040 for athletic field maintenance as presented. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. None. Roll call vote. Ms. Banks? Mr. Dion? Aye. Mr. Oaks? Aye. Dr. Collins Brown? Aye. Mr. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. And Mr. Scheider? Aye. Seven aye, zero nay. Motion carried. Do we have a recommendation to purchase a cargo van for building and grounds? Yes, I recommend the board approve to purchase a cargo van for buildings and grounds as presented. I have a motion, please. So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? Do we have a van? picked out or do we have to order one Here's in the board packet. oh i get didn't it. see it i'm sorry did, did we, we get a good price mike well ken is coming yeah. up to speak we on it price. <laughs> then, did we ever get the trucks that we ordered order. uh, still on order though thank you ken. Okay. I think so, yeah. that's why i was asking about this good evening we have located a van um it is a used van so uh we didn't have to go through the bid process it fills the fills the need and this van is to replace a vehicle that was totaled during the first snowstorm of the oh, winter. Right. Someone hit our van that's and right. uh, destroyed the front end. Fortunately, we had no injuries on our employees' part, but that's what this van is for. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Before Thanks. you run off, yes, sir. is there any update on the status of the vans that were ordered? Um, at this point, I do not believe the VIN numbers have been issued for them. Um, I know Dr. Curry has been in contact with the dealer, and um, they're forthcoming. The vans are That's in the about mail. all we know. Yes. July or August? July or August? I think it's a lot of this year. <laughs> Wait, uh, which July. year? <laughs> We're hoping this year. <laughs> Anything else? Thanks, Kent. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Roll call vote. Mr. Oaks. Aye. Dr. Collins Brown. Aye. Mr. Scheider. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Taylor. Aye. Mr. Okay. Dion. Aye. And Miss Banks. Seven I zero nay. Motion carried. Do we have a recommendation for the Huddle Gold <coughs> excuse me, package agreement for the 2022-2023 school year, which is a software for athletic programs? Yes, I recommend the board approve the Huddle Gold package agreement for 2022-2023 school year, which is a software for athletic programs as presented. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Dr. Collins Brown? Aye. Miss Banks? Aye. Mr. Oaks? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Scheider? Aye. Mr. Taylor? Aye. And Mr. Dion? Aye. Seven aye, zero nay. Motion carried. Do we have a recommendation for the resolution amending the property tax abatement qualifying criteria for the Decatur Macon County Enterprise Zone? Yes, I recommend the board adopt the resolution amending the property tax abatement qualifying criteria for the Decatur Macon County Enterprise Zone as presented. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? 
Roll call vote. Mr. Taylor? Aye. Dr. Collins Brown? Aye. Mr. Dion? Aye. Mr. Scheider? Aye. Miss Banks? Mr. Oaks? Aye. And Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Seven aye, zero nay. Motion carried. We will now move on to our consent items. Does anyone want any item pulled from the consent items to discuss and or vote on separately? Hearing none. Do we have a recommendation for the consent items? Yes. I recommend the board approve the consent items as presented, which includes A, minutes, open, closed session meetings, March 22nd, 2022. B, Freedom of Information Report, C, Bills, D, Annual Power School Talent Ed Perform Records and Sync Agreement, E, School Board Policies Updates, F, Illinois Elementary School Association, IESA Membership, 2022-2023, G, Illinois High School Association, IHSA Membership, 2022-2023, for Eisenhower High School and MacArthur High School, H, Transportation, District Safety Hazards for Robertson Charter School. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Scheider? Aye. Mr. Oaks? Aye. Dr. Collins Brown? Aye. Mr. Dion? Aye. Ms. Banks? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. And Mr. Taylor? Aye. Seven aye, zero nine. Motion carried. We will now move on to announcements. The Board of Education sends condolences to the family of Gloria Brinkman, who passed away Friday, March 11, 2022. Mrs. Brinkman was the mother of Robin Miller, secretary <clears throat> to the Director of Student Services. Doris Lewis, who passed away Friday, April 1, 2022. Mrs. Lewis was a retired English teacher from Eisenhower High School and then became a long-term sub. We will now move on to important dates. I feel like we need a drum roll for this one. That's not a drum roll. It's close enough. <laughs> April 13th, the DPS Kyle Raw Apples versus the Richland RCC Knights. <laughs> Basketball game, Eisenhower High School gym, tip off at 530. 30. 30. Mm -hmm. And there will be concession if the game turns into a rout. <laughs> Uh, this was a challenge from RCC and DPS accepted. So if you're not busy, come out and get a good laugh and support the community. <laughs> April 15th, Good Friday, no school for students. District offices are closed. 18th, observance of Casimir Pulaski holiday, no school for students. District offices closed. The public portion of the next regular meeting of the Board of Education will be at 6.30 p.m. Tuesday, April 26, 2022. First floor boardroom, Kyle Administration Building. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Have a second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. We are now adjourned. Thank you.